So many of us love guns, and I don't talk about them enough. So I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys in on my bear hunting dilemma. I call it that, but don't stress it. It's just for fun and for good discussion, hopefully. So the thing about bear, this all of this comes from mainly research and pondering. This is not from personal experience. I haven't really hunted bear. I've only pursued scouting. So the thing about bear, you need a good sized ground that'll penetrate through their fat layer and hopefully make for a quick, clean kill. If you need a second shot, you're gonna need it fast because that means the bear has decided to charge rather than run off if you didn't do a quick clean kill. So my understanding is if you need a second shot, you're not gonna have time for a third. So taking that into consideration, I'll take you through the gun selection options that I've been considering. I'll say the first one and the one that you saw in my past video is my 54 caliber Lyman Hawken reproduction. Now the great thing about this is it's the most historically correct for my era. I do 1860 and muzzleloader cap locks were very plentiful at that time. And that was the Hawkins era of, uh, it was like the uh, 50s, 60s. It's also a 54 caliber, which is a nice big round. So for takedown, quick kill, this is an effective weapon. Also, the area that I'm hunting, it's rare to get 100 yards of vision. It's not even that common to get 50 yards. So open sight is fine. This is a very accurate weapon at 100 yards and 50 yards, of course. Now the downside is obvious. I've got one shot and reloading a second shot is going to take a while. But it was also common to carry a pistol. And as I was discussing with a guy in the comments or on Facebook, I don't remember, there's just something really cool about being out in the mountains hunting with only muzzleloader weapons. It just takes you back to what they did. But again, the downside on these is reliability. You need to shoot them a lot so that you are familiar with uh, how reliable they are. For instance, I think I need to do a different nipple on this one. I think I have a hard time getting the cap down. And so sometimes I have to pull the hammer back twice to get it to fire, and that's not good. So you gotta have these in working order and be shooting them enough to be familiar. But the good thing is, this is two 54 caliber shots. This one sits in the belt, that one in the hands. So you've got two big caliber loads uh, in case you need them. And again, those are the most historical. So I really like that. The other is this one. <laughs> Who doesn't love a lever action? And even though this is a 94 model Winchester, it still has a very classic look for the 1800s. But even then, the first one didn't come out until 1860, and that was the Henry. And it wouldn't have gotten way out this far until later in the 60s. I think it was 66 was the first one that had wood up here and it was very different. So it's not accurate to my era. I'd have to spend about 1500 bucks to get a new one that is. But even then, on top of that, the round is far from accurate. The 30-30 round is a great round, but it's a very modern round. So now the benefit is you fire it, and now you got a second round. That's faster than pulling a pistol out of the belt. It's a little smaller round than the 54, 
but from what I read, if it's well placed, it's a very effective round. So I wouldn't need a second gun with that. And I'd be carrying a lever action, which is just freaking cool. So you can start to see why this is a dilemma. It's really challenging to uh, decide which one I want to tromp the woods with. Now this one's a different one that a lot of you might not have considered. This is my double barrel 20 gauge. Again, like the 3030, it's similar to a historical weapon, but this is, I think, more common to mid 1900s is when uh, these were really common. And I think this one was a, actually 1980s is when it was produced. But double barrel itself goes back centuries. So you can also see the appeal to this one. Again, you got two rounds instantly. So you don't need a backup weapon as badly. Still would carry one since, but also, but also reloading comes pretty quick. So I wouldn't need a backup weapon. Uh, I'd carry slugs in it, which they say is accurate over 50 yards. I haven't tested it yet, so I'd need to be familiar with, uh, I need to get familiar with it. I've mostly just shot birdshot to do this. The other advantage is on September 15th, grouse is open. And I saw grouse, it was in my bear hunting video. And so I could carry a couple birdshot rounds in my pocket and switch them out if I see grouse and switch back to uh, a, a slug for bear. It's lightweight, by the way, which I'm, I won't let the weight determine what I carry, but I got to say this and the 3030 is much lighter than this. But again, the history of carrying around what is similar to what they would have really carried is worth it. I'm young enough and strong enough, I don't need to make my decision based off of weight. And then this is a single 12 gauge. So as you can imagine, it's bigger than this. So takedown power might be a little more effective, but it's single barrel, so. Okay. Filming with goat. So it's single barrel, so that's bottom on my list. I more just had it to talk about it. So, uh, sidearm. I already talked about the single shot uh, muzzle loader. Now, I had originally bought my walker for this purpose. The walker, of course, is nice. I had originally bought it for certain reasons that were misled about reenacting. It's the biggest of the black powder. It's close to a 357 effectiveness, which as I'll get into is not highly effective for bear. So it's a big heavy gun, not really effective as far as put down, uh, take down loads go. And so if that's the case with that 44, even more so with the 1860, which has a maximum powder capacity of 30 grains. So this one's out also. What happened was I bought these thinking I could get a conversion cartridge and have the effectiveness of a modern round but be able to switch back to a historical round. The problem is I didn't know that those conversion cylinders need uh, drop down uh, rounds. So you can only put 30 grains of powder in a cartridge for a conversion cylinder and that's no more effective and sometimes less effective than the black and pow the black powder and uh, cap and ball loading so these aren't exactly a viable option for backup for bear now if i did choose to the downside about these is that these are saddle guns so i've got holsters to carry them on my saddle but the problem with that is when bear hunting, I'm going to tie up my horses and then go stock for a while, you know, a mile away from my horses. So I don't really want to leave these sitting on my horses. So I could just take one, use the saddle holster, and then when I'm walking around, put it in this holster. 
but that's not historical, contrary to what some of you might have uh, thought, contrary to what I used to think. Uh, these are not very common, so it's not really a historical way to go, and it's just super heavy. I'd rather have this one even, because it's a more effective round and it's not even as heavy. So that's the dilemma there. Those will probably need to be my saddle guns when I'm not hunting. Which then brings me to the 357 that you mostly see me with. Now I was fortunate when I stopped into the hardware store to look for some rounds. I bumped into a guy who actually hunts with 357 with a lever action. Super cool. So he filled me in on what you need for hunting rounds. There's a big difference between self-defense against humans and self-defense against big animals. So a 357 hollow point is highly effective against humans, but with a bear where you need that much penetration, <laughs> where you need it to be reliable to go deep inside and hit the vitals or through its thick skull, you need a different type of around. And even at that, carrying the right type of around, it's still not that effective against the black bear, especially when you're in need of it. So I don't really want to be reliant on that in case I need it. It'd be great for bear, uh, uh, deer, maybe even for elk, if you know how to place it, but bear and elk really needs a higher caliber unless you're super effective with your aim. So, what do you think on all of these? What would you carry and why? I'll tell you what I would carry. I'm most likely just gonna stick with this. I do absolutely love being as historical as I can. And there's nothing like carrying these two weapons around. So I need to do some shooting and get more familiar. I might need to get a uh, new nipple for that one. Maybe even for this one. It seems to be having a hard time setting those uh, nipples, uh, the, the caps properly. So right now that's really where I'm leaning. When grouse opens up and I haven't had a bear yet, I'll probably carry this a couple times just because uh, that's another option is just switch it up a little bit so that I do get to enjoy carrying these uh, various weapons. So <clears throat> that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that. Leave your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching guys. Oh, and of course I just put this one out here cause that's just for emergencies. But not very effective if a cougar or a bear is charging you. Maybe uh, put yourself out of your own misery with this one. <laughs> Such a freaking cool gun, though. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me. Look forward to doing my next hunting video. I took a week off because I've got horse problems to deal with. And it's been excessively hot. And I just got to be honest, it's not fun going up there when there's mosquitoes swarming constantly and you have to cover yourself with off knowing that it's not healthy for you. I like to be healthy. So it looks like things are going to cool down a little bit. I should get back up in there uh, this week, even if it's just for hunting and I haven't got the horses ready yet. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Catch you later.